Saint conquers the devil. Buddha will save you from sin. Yeah. It was 1981, 27 years before the It Man series, that Sammo Hung decided to embark on another journey showcasing Wing Chun. Wing Chun was the style that Sammo first introduced to the period Kung Fu pieces of that era in 1978 with the classic Warriors 2. But in my opinion, Sammo Hung took the action to new heights with Prodigal Son. Frenetic, brutal and intricate fight scenes are on display in this film. A film considered by fans of the genre to be the best period Kung Fu film of all time. Basically, before Ip Man, there was Prodigal Son. I'm going to discuss why this film is so great, briefly glossing over the story, but focusing more on the choreography. Prodigal Son stars the extremely talented Yen Bu as a young Lung Jan. For those not aware, Yen Bu is the real life Peking Opera classmate of Sammo Hung and Jackie Chan. Bu does a fantastic job showcasing the development of a spoiled entitled brat into an absolute martial beast. Special mention goes to Bu, who also does a lot of the doubling for others in the film, but we will get into that later. The late Lam Ching Ying plays Lung Yi Tai, the Peking Opera performer, who on stage plays the fragile female, but off stage is the deadly master of Wing Chun. In my opinion, this is Lam Ching Ying's best martial arts performance in his films. His execution of the Wing Chun technique is near flawless as well as his acting. He perfectly balances his comedic antics with beautiful but serious Wing Chun. Sammo Hung plays Wang Wa Bo, the martial brother of Lung Yi Tai. But what can I say, Sammo is Sammo. He displays his physical prowess and dexterity despite his rather large girth. Frankie Chan plays sort of a villain. Lord Nick Fay doing a tremendous job in keeping up with Sammo Hung's choreography for that time. During this era of Kung Fu movies, there was a particular style of choreography used. This was largely influenced by the operatic styles that many of the actors had backgrounds in, as well as choreographer Lao Ga Lung, who began bringing animal forms from Hong Ga into the movies. The choreography often involved long takes of actors having to memorise complicated movements, often 10 to 30 movements in one take. Camera shots were often full body, with very few cuts between movements, really showcasing the skill of the actors. There was a shift in the temper of these Kung Fu films from the late 70s to early 80s. More undercranking was used, and the editing got that bit more slick. I personally think Sammo paved the way for this new type of action and it was the entry of what was to come with the more modern action films. The opening restaurant fight scene sets the intensity of the action to come. Sammo and his team, which includes Yen Biao and Lam Ching Ying, definitely stepped up their game, not only with the choreography but the cinematography. There was a lot more emphasis on the reaction of the stunt performers with Sammo pulling the camera shot back to show the acrobatic falls that his stunt team delivered. Sammo really focused on execution and power. All techniques performed involved more than just movement, there was feeling. The fight scene between Lung Yi Tai and Lung Jan shows a fine display of the simplicity and directness of Wing Chun, juxtaposed with the elegance and grace of Peking Opera. As I mentioned earlier, Sammo had explored Wing Chun before with the classic Warriors 2, which was a fantastic film. But for me, Lam Ching Ying just seemed to embody the style of Wing Chun better than Lung Kai Yan. Lam Ching Ying came across as a genuine exponent of the art. 
Lam Ching vs the Ninjas is the classic scene that most Kung Fu films of that era had, where one fighter battles against multiple assailants. The problem with these types of fight scenes were the lack of realism, in that a lot of the assailants will come one at a time, and the others will be waiting their turn. Avid Kung Fu moviegoers don't seem to mind this, but casual fans are always complaining. Why are they standing there? Go and attack him at once. Samo's direction for this fight scene avoided that pitfall by cleverly choreographing and using different camera shots to hide ninjas from the frame. Samo and Lam Ching Ying really do their best to show how gritty and ruthless Wing Chun can be with their techniques. Samo was known as one of the pioneers to push his stunt team to be hit for real. Realism was a big factor for Samo Hung's films. For me, the best fight scene in the film, and probably one of the best ever filmed, was Lung Yi Tai vs Lord Nick Fei. Two minutes of martial kung fu bliss. Everything about this fight scene just lets you know it was a classic. Obvious undercranking was dumb, but used in the correct context. For me, what stands out about this fight scene is the tempo and rhythm. Almost like a violent dance. Samo does his best to accentuate the fighter's abilities through use of close-ups for specific locks and grabs, as well as beautiful overhead shots showcasing the footwork and balance of the fighters. Special mention goes to Yen Bu who doubled for Frankie Chan for the more acrobatic kicks and complex movements in the scene. The finale to be honest was not my favourite fight scene of the film. I did get the feeling that it was slightly rushed but there were still some great acrobatic kicks as well as brutal displays of the new techniques that Chan had just learned. Yen Bu doubled a few times for Frankie Chan in this particular scene. It was clear that within Samo's stunt team at the time, Yen Bu was his best all round performer and had the cleanest kicking techniques at that time. The final fight scene was brutal, fast paced and technically brilliant. The only issue I had with it was how it felt slightly rushed and for me not as polished as the fight scene between Yi Tai and Nuk Fei. The calligraphy scene with Samo being occasionally doubled by Bu was a fun scene to watch and again a scene that showcased the creativity and skill that many of the Pekin Opera performers had. Samo uses music to accentuate movements of combatants and to build suspense before a fight scene. Then once the action commences, only the classic clashing of blocks, kicks and punches are heard. I really love this technique, it really helps focus the audience's attention to the action. All in all, this film still gets 5 stars for his action. For me, this was the start of the new wave of action that was to be breathed into the life of Kung Fu films at that time. The level of action direction is so high, it still holds up to action titles like the Ip Man series of today. I am aware that there is a Hong Kong Blu-ray version of the film. The copy I have is by Cine Asia, which has been digitally remastered and restored giving a crisp, clear presentation of the film. The DVD also has a bunch of special features for hardcore fans to learn a bit more. If you haven't seen this film, I strongly advise you get a copy as it will definitely be worth your time. If you've enjoyed this commentary, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.